All right, we're live on today's live Q&A with, hey, this is the Living in Costa Rica live Q&A session. And look, uh, today we are talking about getting justice in Costa Rica. Now, look, uh, I'm excited. We've got a lot of great stuff for you. You know, and it's, it's understanding that I love Costa Rica. Rebecca and I have been here for 10 years. Do you love Costa Rica? I do. I probably love it more than you do. I think she might be right. And and look, hey, let me know real quick. Uh, can you hear Rebecca good enough? Do I need to put the mic close to her? Because she is soft spoken. Uh, let me know how how the audio is so I can adjust because Rebecca is soft spoken. OK, so, hey, you know, I'm really excited for today's uh, podcast. Really got some good stuff. No matter where you go, bad things do happen. But remember, you can't control what happens to you. You can't control how you respond to it. And look, I've had a lot of bad things happen uh, to us while we were here. But you know what? We focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. And, and we, we're, we haven't always responded. Um... <laughs> no, we, ha you know, and look, it I took you a long time. It took me a long time. Uh, I didn't know if maybe we were going to have to go home. Yeah, really, really. At first, I mean, you know, and, and look. I, I admit, I, I do not ever claim if I make a mistake, I'll tell you. And, you know, when we first got here, it, it was so against my personality. And you have to understand, folks, I wasn't prepared like I, I try to pre prepare you guys. And look, I know sometimes I might can come off a little harsh uh, and I'm trying to improve and, you know, try to give you the facts so that you can be prepared without uh, sounding too negative because I want you to be prepared because it, it's tough on your personality. It's real. Look, it's easy for me. I don't know how she does it. I mean, you know, crap can happen to Rebecca and she's like, Vita. like that makes it all right. No, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but you know, if you, no matter where you're at in the world, stuff happens, but guess what? This channel is not about the United States, Canada, the, any other part of the world. It's about Costa Rica. And you need to know, well, when bad stuff does happen to you, do you have any recourse? You know, well, I mean, do you actually have any rights? And that's why you're here on this channel, so that you can kind of learn and find out. I think you should pick your chair up a little bit, move a little closer. So anyway, um, and, you know, by having uh, these lives, we can discuss some of these different things and then you can learn from them because I can, you know, I can promise you that when I first came to Costa Rica, so many bad things happened because I didn't know. I didn't do my research and I wanted to start a YouTube channel years ago, but I could not honestly check and do a YouTube channel because I was so pissed off at the world. I was so mad and look, you know, I, I, I've, I've become a better man through it all. And now it's like, okay, Here's some new drama. Go forward. <laughs> and I learned from it, you know, and, and and so it's important. Hey, let's move forward. Let's learn from it. What can we do? Because uh, so let's get into that topic, you know. Uh, so, hey, let's look at a couple of different scenarios. And and hey, we're going to share actual experiences, things that have actually happened. So, hey, for example. I think that the uh, hey, I, I love what Ka I love what Karen says right here. Karen is a green and Karen probably has a personality a lot like Rebecca's. Uh, she says that Rebecca has the right idea. Try to let it roll off your back and don't worry about the drama. But some things have to be dealt with in some way. Karen, you've got a pretty, pretty good. Uh, even kill thought there, because, hey, obviously stuff is going to happen. And, yeah, and, you know, it's best to let it roll off your back because really being mad and angry and vengeful, really, you're hurting yourself. So you've got to be able to let it go as quickly as you can. We are human nature, so we have to deal with it. And then we have to think, OK, what was my part in this? Did I make a mistake? What can I do to improve myself? Man, if, if you can't see other people's perspectives, if you can't put yourself in other people's shoes, you're not willing to grow. I can see how the what was the other person thinking? Uh, could I do better? And so you have to. But but mm -hmm. like Karen is saying, you have to uh, deal with it in some way, whether it's personal growth or whatever. Right. And as difficult as it is for my personality to deal with things, I will deal with what 
I have to, but let it, you know, if it's trivial, just let it go for goodness sakes. You know, it's not worth my, um, my health, you know, the stress, the, um, you know, in the big picture, it, it's going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. I mean, how many times did it take you to see my perspective on chaining the propane tanks? <laughs> Boy, she is putting me on the spot. You know, I I am honest to a fault. And uh, I mean, I'm telling you, the first time they stole the tank, I told Rebecca, you need to chain this thing down. <laughs> yeah, I believe the way it went is uh, you worry too much. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember that at all. Mm -hmm. I, I, no, I don't remember that at all. You know, in, in reality, what was it? Was it four or five propane tanks I, before I, think I it was found? Only three. I think I, after the third I, one, she's being nice. Seventy-five dollars per tank. You decided yeah. to buy ten dollars worth of chain <laughs> and chain it up. It look, good point. Seventy-five dollars a tank, and you're getting a used tank. A hey, ten dollars worth of chain's a lot cheaper. So, <laughs> so anyway, I oh, didn't know. mean to choke you up, babe. <laughs> I'm, I don't. I think I'm getting rid of Rebecca, man. I'm gonna throw her under the bus. Talk gone it, man. You're making me look bad. You know. Any, anyway, you know. It, not trying to do that. No, yeah. she's not. She's really not. Because we 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 really do want to share our perspectives. So hey, you know. So let's let's look at that exact scenario. The propane tank was getting stolen. Do you have any recourse? Well, no. You know, but now, now you don't have any recourse. Obviously, you can't prove someone stole the propane tank. And in, and in that particular house, someone actually, because the kitchen had uh, like hurricane fencing around it, wasn't closed in. And some people, while we were gone one time, actually cut all the stuff, went into the kitchen, stole the little bitty, uh, I think they stole the microwave. It was like little a toaster oven, little man. toaster oven. They stole a couple of things. Okay. So they stole a few things. And uh, my neighbor, who was kind of maybe watching the house, kind of let us know. Anyway, hey, we reported it to the police. but Which I suggest still reporting it to the police. Even though nothing uh, was done about it, um, I would still make a police report. That way it alerts them, you know, at, even though they may not do anything about our particular situation, maybe if enough people report, they might do something about it. And, of course, this was a little teeny tiny town you know who knows what happens in the city we've never lived in mm -hmm. a big city yeah. in costa rica we've never lived in a gated community maybe when you call the police from a gated yeah. community they're you know right there yeah. I, I don't really know other than what we've experienced about little small towns that we've yeah. lived in yeah um I don't want to have to bring this up, but because I see it, this is very important. Roderick said, hey, I reserved a spot for the relocation retreat in June. I'd like to know how to proceed further. Hey, I don't want to go over all that live in front of all of this stuff here. But Roderick, if you would, please, because I was going to call you personally. But if I remember right, I think you're way over in uh, another country, Ireland or something like that. Send me an email or tell me a good time to call you so I can call you and tell you how to proceed, what we can do to, to help you out. Okay. So I hope that answers your question please give me a thumbs up uh and so that i can know how when when i can talk to you okay all right so let's get on to the matter at hand so um uh, you know so okay back to that scenario someone's in, at that particular house we were in a bad spot a little bitty old town i mean look they stole rebecca's hiking shoes and my shoes and some weights right off the back porch so um uh it's important to understand that in that, in that scenario, you have no recourse. Come on, you don't have any proof. And even if you did have proof, would anything happen? No, it, it, nothing would happen. It's it's called petty theft. So what can you do to avoid petty theft? What are some things people can do to avoid petty theft? Um, cameras. Video cameras? Even, even if they didn't have video cameras, if they had signs up there saying video cameras, uh, Tico's are scared. They're like, ooh, and, and that'll stop some of it, not all of it. Mm -hmm. Video cameras, what else? Um, maybe a dog. Not a chihuahua that's just going, yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get, get you a decent sized dog that will, you know, they're afraid they're going to get bitten. And Nikki, you know, she's not a big dog, medium sized dog, but they're scared of her. And don't make it easy. You don't know, make we, it easy, we right? Stuff out on the, on the porch. So all they had to do was, you know, come and, come and get it. And while we're talking about that, 
even though we were stole from, I can honestly say in that little town, I never felt threatened as far as my safety. You know, I'd walk everywhere. There were three little grocery stores and I had to walk to all three to get what was on my list. Right. Because <laughs> one store would have bananas. The other store didn't. One had tomatoes, didn't have the other. So anyway, so, uh, so I the, never felt. Uh, the moral of that story is that, hey, there is going to be petty theft. There are things you could do about it. But no one's trying to talk you out of going to Costa Rica. It's part of the culture. Is every Tico going to steal from you? No. I've got some best friend Ticos. My neighbor's a great friend. You know, one of my best friends. You know, not everybody. But will poor people try to take advantage of you? Does that happen in every country? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's some neighborhoods in, in um, Louisiana that if you park your car in the wrong place, when you go to get back in it, the stereo's gone, maybe yeah. the tires too. Hey, you know, so so we're not talking about uh, like as if Costa Rica is any worse than anywhere. Else. Right, it's right. Just, it just, it does. Happens. It seems like it happens more here because while there's probably a lot, lot, lot more poor people in Costa Rica than there is in the United States, it's, it's the same everywhere. Okay. I take a look at what Karen says. That's a good suggestion. Having solar lights outside your house will alert people when they come near your place. Motion, motion, yeah, light. motion detected lights. Because I mean, look, this is how crazy it is. One day uh, we were, what was it? Like midnight sound asleep guy was standing at our gate. He just stole the dumbbells and he was hollering. Oh, babe. Oh, well, you got to explain what that is. Now, it's kind of like, hello, anybody yeah. home? Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what that means. And I mean, here it is, middle of the night. Well, he he wanted me to get up. He's going to sell me the dumbbells he just stole off my porch. Yeah. But we, we just <laughs> he was drunk or on, on high yeah, or something like that. So my, my point is, you know, like Rebecca said, hey, she felt very, very safe there. Matter of fact, uh, is there ever been a place, because this is important, has there ever been a place that you felt unsafe in costa rica that we've lived that we've lived no not where we've lived now there's been a few places that um we visited a few towns you know like tours the areas and it depends on the time of the night like i would not go to certain towns by myself yeah um, i feel okay with you know with, yeah with so you, but so that's talking about petty theft and there's a lot a lot of stuff you could do to avoid petty theft, okay? Now, and and er, people do that. I mean, that's why you see all the bars on the windows, and you know, you'll see. Um, I was laughing. You today see fences, who, right? We were looking at um, houses for sale on, on one of the websites, and I was like, man, they don't know how to stage how to stage their pictures because this really nice house had um, it looked like a two inch thick chain around the barbecue pit, you know, and that was, that was in their, their <laughs> in picture their trying to sell the house, you know? So, but um, I'm mentioning that because that is uh typical. It's just a precaution. It's what we were talking about. You know, yeah. I told Alan, I said, the worst thing I think I've seen is um, somebody had their patio furniture yeah, you know, well, with a, a, cable, a running cable running through all the legs of the chairs and the little tables. So it's like, and oh that's when we goodness. were living at Pedregoso. See, we were living mm -hmm. in Pedregoso. That's a nice neighborhood. That, yeah, it was a nice neighborhood. That was a really but, nice you know, place. even the Ticos know. So I'm not saying uh, poor Ticos are going to steal only from gringos. No, 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 no. And no. That's what I'm saying. They're that. not prejudiced at all. They're going to steal from anybody that's dumb enough. That's probably not the right word. Are you dumb enough to leave your patio furniture out there and it's not chained down? Well, they're going to steal it because they could take it and sell it. So, and really, I'm not saying you're dumb. It's just that you, you have to educate yourself and say, I was dumb, man. I, I left. How many propane tanks am I going to leave out? I was dumb enough to leave it out. And I, well, I got smart one day and I finally listened to Rebecca and I chained it down. And you want to know how many propane tanks got stolen after I chained it down? Zero. Right, right. And we've had our car broken into. Well, not they didn't damage it. Our car doesn't lock. So um, we probably shouldn't admit that on camera, huh? Yeah. Well, we don't keep anything in it anymore. Right. We, right. we just learned don't leave your sunglasses. Yeah. If, don't if leave if a little bit of change. Them. I've had a three dollar pair of sunglasses since we moved here, and nobody has ever stolen them. No. <laughs> but if you, they would have cost a hundred dollars, but they, they stole. But they stole the little bit of change I had in there for the toll booth, right? Yeah. You know, so I mean, because you can, you can, you can, you quickly buy. That. That's right. <laughs> it took my cerveza change. <laughs> Which, by the way, how many of you guys got your Allen's apple juice? Unfortunately, I ran out of apple juice, but I do have some uh, flavorful orange juice. <laughs> 
So anyway, anyway, we oh, I'm getting ready for popcorn. So anyhow, you know, when it comes to uh, petty theft, just using a little bit of common sense, uh, have a fence up. Now, do you have to have fence up with razor wire and electrical wire? Probably not. That's overkill. Yeah. But if you do put a fence up and it does have the barbed wire with, you know, the, the lean on it, well, make sure it's done right. I got a video coming out soon. You know, the, the, the actual barbed wire should be pointing out, not to the inside. If it points out, that's what keep the thieves out. It makes it difficult for them to go over. If it's pointed on the inside, well, then they can easily climb over. And now that the crooks are in, they can't get out. See, it's so they just didn't build it right. You know, but here, you know, and I'm not saying they don't know any better. A lot of people will build. Oh, hey, I need some, you know, anybody that builds a fence? Oh, my brother-in-law can build a fence. Oh, yeah. OK. And so, you know, they're, they're not professionals, but they're trying to make money. They build a fence. They build it to the best of their ability. They don't know that they've got it built wrong. Well, well like we've talked about, they probably see that that's how um, the fences are put like on uh, jails. On, on prisons. prisons. Yeah. And that's made to keep the people inside. So. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe that's I mean, if why they think, yeah, you know, if they're watching TV and they see the prisons, well, guess what? You know, all of it is focused on the inside. Prisoners can't get out, right? Well, you don't want a crook getting in and can't get out. So, you know, but it's okay. You know, it's just understanding these things. Yeah, we and, saw a uh, house that had um, it one way in the front and another way on the side. I guess just in yeah. case they weren't sure which yeah. one. Yeah, and but, look. But let me say, go um, ahead. Back to, I was talking about the patio furniture that was chained. This was actually a house that was really, really close to the street. You remember which house I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. It and was yeah, it was practically on the street, and it did not have a fence. Yeah, it didn't so have a fence. its front porch was just open. Yeah, like, wide it open. It was like maybe 10 feet from the road. So and it's, it's, it's very easy for someone to just whip in, grab it, throw it in the back of the vehicle. Yeah. Smart on them. And it was some Tico smart on them to put a cable around it and lock it down. And I think that was just like... You know, just something that the older homes had, um, the fence and the all the stuff on the, the windows, because they're new style homes. They're very new, modern looks. You know, almost all the new homes yeah. have a, a sleek, modern clean look, look. clean mm -hmm. look. They don't have those um, bars on the Yeah, not all the... of them have bars. So a lot of people are putting these concrete fences yeah, tend to and have the concrete... electrical wires. And right. you feel like you're, in a, or it looks like to me, you feel like you're in a penitentiary. So, or, uh, or they'll have the, um, the concrete fences on the sides of the house and their front porch is, um, you know, it's open to the, to the road, but they don't keep anything on it. You know, they have all of their stuff in the back, which is secure. Yeah. So, you know, that's it's it's changing. I yeah. Find. Well, it, it is changing. Uh, I like that new style. House. Yeah, well, yeah the new style great. houses definitely are much nicer. The inside is still the exact same thing. It's still the same layout. But anyway, we're not talking about houses. We're talking about uh, do you have rights in Costa Rica? So we talked about some petty theft stuff. So so let's move forward. Oh, but I just wanted a quick shout out to Uncle Chico. You know, hey, we greatly appreciate you when you support our channel. We, hey, we appreciate you even when you don't. But obviously, it's very, very nice when you support the channel. And look, on YouTube, you can click that little dollar sign. You can support as much as little as you want, you know. Uh, and you can support us by joining our members only area. Ten bucks a month. Cancel anytime you want. We greatly, greatly appreciate your support because we do all of this for free. Uh, we don't really sell you anything other than just more good information. So, hey, thank you so much, Uncle Chico. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, hey, like like Karen was saying, she's got her popcorn and iced tea. She's ready to go. And Robin's like, well, I don't know apple juice for me, but she might take a flavored uh, fruit juice and <laughs> you go. <laughs> But anyway, I like to have fun. But anyhow, so uh, if you can't have fun, it ain't worth doing, right? But anyhow, uh, so petty theft is one thing. Well, let's take a look at a, uh, a little different scenario. Let's say, for example, because I put it out in the email. Let's say you and your neighbor are friends, your neighbor comes in. I mean, you and your neighbor are friends, been friends for several years, and uh, you, you, you're you going home on vacation. You ask your neighbor to house it. He's happy to house it. And uh, you know what? You come back, you find out your house has been robbed. Okay. And, and you know, you, you had a couple of thousand dollars in the drawer or under your mattress. 
but your neighbor found it. Okay. Well, you come back and you're like, man, my house is robbed. And he's like, really? I can't believe your house is robbed, man. I mean, I, I was there every day feeding your animals. I didn't see nobody. Well, no, you robbed my house. Oh, no, no, no. I'd never do that to you. Well, when you show him video proof, he didn't know you had cameras. Well, uh, now he apologizes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd give you the money back, but I didn't spend all that money. And, you know, can you forgive me? Well, you know what? You can be mad and vindictive, and but you know what? You got to get over it. You got to get past it because not forgiving him is not going to do anything but hurt you. Yeah, I can forgive you, but are you going to let him in your house again? Well, no, because if he stole from you once, he's going to steal from you again. And so now here's the, here's the question. What's your recourse? You have video proof of the guy stealing from you. Okay, let me tell you, here's what's going to happen. You can take it to the police. You can report it, okay? Most of the time, I'm not going to say all the time, most of the time, especially if it's gringo and gringo or gringo against Tico, nothing is going to happen. It probably nothing's going to happen if it's Tico and Tico. Now, if it's gringo against gringo, uh, the, the, the Tico police are going to laugh at you and say, hey, that's your problem, okay? If it's if Tico stole your stuff, it's going to, and the, the police are probably going to say, well, you've got plenty of money. So what? We got way too much work to do. If it's well, Tico, say that. No, they're not going to say that. Tico they and tell Tico. You that they're going to right. investigate it and all of that. I'm glad you brought that up because they will, they will say they're investigating and stuff. Uh, and they're they probably not going to do anything. Call and follow up now, if it was Tico against Tico, that. they might do something, but probably not. But why? They're overloaded. They're overbooked. They got too much work to do. Especially so, now with all the immigration. With all the yeah, crime. with all the immigrants coming in. Now, how do I know that, Alan? You're just lying. No, okay. So you know, at the retreat, there's a speaker there that actually speaks, shares actual uh, home invasion where he got broken to him. Him and his girlfriend, you know, gunmen come in, standing on his head. He's got video of all this. He reports it, the OEHOTA, which is kind of like the FBI. And you know what? They're researching. He's got video of all of this stuff. And they say, we're looking into it. We're looking into it, looking into it, looking into it, looking into it. And nothing ever happens. And, you know, unless it's something serious like a homicide, someone actually dies. But do you want to wait until you die before they do something? You know, so, but I'm not trying to scare you. Not trying to scare you. Most of the time, that kind of thing's not going to happen. Someone breaking into your house, stealing stuff is still considered petty theft. Doesn't matter they stole $2,000 in all your jewelry, okay? It's still going to be petty theft. Now, someone killing you, uh, you know, homicide, it's going to be a little more serious because it's going to hit the news, okay? Here's my, here's, here's my deal. What are your rights? Do you have any recourse? Well, you got the exact same recourse as you do in the United States. You can tell the police, but here the justice system is so, so, so slow. Let's say that, you know, um, and I, I well, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll stop there because I'll tell you another scenario. Because uh, you could go to, um, uh, so the police are not going to do anything, okay? So really you just, you, you just, in that situation, you end up having to write it off, but you can do what we already talked about having cameras, having a big dog, making sure your house is very secure, you know, having a strong door, you know, don't leaving yourself you open. Have all of that, you're not, probably not going to get robbed. In most cases, if you have that stuff, you have to understand that, that theft, these are worthless creatures and they're going for the low hanging fruit. They're going for easy pickings, man. If they got to get past uh, a security camera, and all of that stuff and an alarm. No, 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 no. They're going to run somewhere else. They're looking for low hanging fruit. That's why gated communities are so popular. That's why gated communities are popular. But theft still happens in gated communities. Usually an inside joint. Right. It's usually. So, hey, let's talk about that since Rebecca said it. Say it again so they can hear you. Well, it's usually an inside job. Yeah, it's usually. But, okay. So, like the people that um, in San Vito, the wealthy couple that you know, they got, they were tied up and held at gunpoint. They really weren't hurt any more than um, traumatized from the experience and bumps and bruises and, you know, like uh, where they were tied, uh, which is not something to sneeze at, but I mean, they didn't kill them. They, they didn't. Uh, but those people had all the precautions and everything, but they were known in the community to, um, have, to have money. money and to have it in their house. Now, how do you think the burglars knew where in the house the safe know, was because a lot of people have um 
and it's not all housekeepers. I like to point that out. There are some absolutely wonderful, wonderful people. But just like with everything else, um, my goodness, it, people are going to. Uh, there's going to be bad people everywhere. That no you matter go. where you go, there's going to so, be bad people. I guess. We're, so, so wait. So back up. You said usually an inside job. How's it an inside job? Well, the cook that you hired, the housekeeper you hired, uh, the people that are in your house cleaning. Uh, that you hired. Well, they end up talking to their friends and family. It's like, man, Alan's house is so nice. You ought to see the barn he's living in, boy. It's upscale. <laughs> I know right where his safe is at. He got money, you know? And so guess what? That word gets out before you know it. They're talking and okay. You know, and the housekeeper said, why don't you let us know when he's gone? And in conversation and talking to the housekeeper, yeah, Rebecca and I are going to celebrate her birthday. Well, guess what? It's an inside job because when we're celebrating the birthday, someone's going to come in, rob the house and steal stuff. So it's usually an inside job. That's why you got to really, really be careful who you allow in your house. Now, uh, Karen had mentioned something here. Get, get recommendations. Yeah, get, you need to get recommendations and before you ever let anybody in. But here's the important thing. If you do get uh, uh, people in, yes, you want to get recommendations. But look, don't let them know where the safe is at. Don't, you know, hide all that stuff. It's like, don't let them clean this room, you know, or something, you know. And Karen says, like, well, get police involved. I can see it hard uh, living next to my neighbor. You're right, Karen. So you do want to be careful that when you come to Costa Rica, right, and let's say that did happen to you. Well, then you got to do, you got one of two things to do. You can move or man, all of a sudden now you're putting up fences and security. And, and of course now your neighbor's never going to do that again. Right. Because you, you got in precaution. Okay. But here's the good thing. If that did happen to your neighbor, your neighbor, believe it or not, this is Costa Rica. They still going to be friendly with you because they're going to pretend like nothing happened. It's just the way it is. You know, they're going to pretend like nothing's happened. Now, I'm not going to keep talking to my neighbor, but, it, you know, that's why it's important to rent. And I always say, hey, C-Y-E, control your environment. Buy a piece of property. That's one hectare. You don't have someone on the right and to the left of you. So you don't have to see your neighbors. If you can control your environment, you really, really can enjoy your slice of paradise. OK, so, uh, you know, so a lot of that won't happen. Now, I'm going to uh, real quick here. <clears throat> Here's a good question, because we're talking about this. Muka says, do a lot of tickles have farms? Hardly any Ticos have firearms. Almost every single one of them's got a machete, if you want to call that a firearm, okay? So uh, most Ticos don't have any kind of firearm, but guess what? The thugs and the thieves, they do, and it's easy to go buy uh, a firearm on the black market, okay? The law-abiding <coughs> citizens don't have Yeah, the so guns. most people don't. So you don't have to worry about that happening, okay? Now, let's go to what Doug said. Sorry, but they wouldn't be uh, left free to do it again. Uh, Rickon says, can you take justice in your own hands? And I did allude to that in the video uh, that, you know, in the promo video talking about the podcast. Now, I, I want to stress this again. <clears throat> Let me stress it again. Bad things happening. Do bad things happen to you because you're a gringo? No. Uh, will it happen to you more often because of your gringo? Yes. Why? Because nothing screams louder than gringo with money when you're driving around in a golf cart. Nothing says I got too much money when you're riding around town on a Harley Davidson. Nothing screams I got too much money when you're riding around in this uh, 2023 Land Rover. Come on, people. Got to use a little bit of common sense. You're walking around with a Rolex. You know, you've got... If you don't want to be a target, don't make yourself a target, okay? So you've got to scale down and you've got to, to you know, so, it, yeah, it's going to happen to you more because obviously a, a criminal says, man, there's some Ticos in this neighborhood. They got money. I'm going to rob them instead of their neighbor who's who are the Ticos and they ain't got no money, okay? So think about that. Now, back to that question. Doug said, we wouldn't be left to do it again. Uh, can you take justice in your own hand? True story here. True story, okay? Uh, I read an article, I think it was on the Tico Times, because look, it's not because you're gringo. It happens all over. Uh, there's this one little town, and uh, this couple 
would just target a place and rob it and rob it and rob. And everybody in that community knew every time a house got robbed, it was the same couple. They got reported to the police, reported to the police, reported to the police. The police never did anything, never did anything. Well, guess what? It got so bad that this same couple robbed the police station. Okay. They robbed the police station. Well, yeah, and this is not hearsay. I saw it in the Tico Times. Yeah, too. it was in the news. It was in the news. So guess what? The people of the police weren't doing nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. So the community got together and they took matters in their own hands. And so they 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 set up a trap and waited for them to come in, caught them, beat them to a pulp. They ended up in the hospital. Their car that was parked across from the police station, they riddled it, okay, uh, and just did whatever, destroyed it. And did the police do anything? No, they took matters in their own hands. Okay, now, I, I do want to uh, point out, it's just like Eduardo was saying, I've never had a problem with anyone. My two houses are sometimes with nobody watching, you know, for six months in our house is nice in Nicoya, uh, Carmona, Guanacaste, uh, uh, and one in Tebas in San Jose, and I act like a Tico. So what I'm hearing him say, well, he acts like a Tico. He might have a nice house, but he's not painting a target on himself. So what I'm, you know, what we're saying is, hey, this does not happen everywhere. It's never happened here. And guess what? All my neighbors here, nobody locks their doors. But can it happen? Yes. Use a little bit of common sense and it's less likely to happen to you. So once again, do you have recourse? Uh, well, you, you do have some recourse, but will anything happen? Probably not. So, um, you know, and, and of course, Johnny kind of, I think Johnny is replying to what Eduardo says. He says, uh, or no, let's see, John Foster says, Michael has never had anything. If you've ever seen where he lives, uh, you are a hard worker and he is not stick to the with the cages of Louisiana. We got your back. Uh, well, I, I thought he was replying to Eduardo. But anyway, you know, uh, if if you look like you got a lot of stuff, uh, if you look like you got a lot of wealth, then you're a target. OK, just hey, uh, it's what Eduardo was saying. He, he clearly says, well, <clears throat> You know, I live like a Tico. I think Eduardo is a Tico, I think, uh, but he's in the United States. And so now when he says acting like a Tico, it, it's like when you go to Costa Rica, you're not like, I'm going to Costa Rica because I want to be a Tico. No, but you can kind of adapt and you can uh, use a little bit of common sense so that you don't paint a target. Yeah. Well, something I thought about, um, we've housed that at a lot of houses. And if you think about it, nothing ever happened to us at any of the houses. And why is that? These these people had these were all more wealthy people. They um, had all the proper things in place. That's you know, right. They had the the survey, they had alarm the cameras, systems. Alarm they had systems. cameras. They'd been there for all of them had been there for um for quite a while now did they have problems in the past well we really don't know, yeah, we don't know but, but they happened. learned and i'm thinking about communities and like different areas um in contrast to the houses that we've rented and the lower income um places that we've stayed because we've been very frugal or cheap or whatever you want to call it but we've gotten call me cheap you know, if you we've want. gotten really cheap um rent but we're also in um you know, it, not gated communities and not yeah. um, nicer you know, so it, it, areas. So it's not going to happen. <laughs> If you use some common sense, right, uh, take a, and, you know, some of it's not common sense because you're used to doing things because where you come from might be very safe. You can't come over here and assume it's going to be the same. Well, that's what I was going to say earlier about the reason we even are sharing this is because we came with a very um, naive. naive idea of, oh, Costa Rica is absolutely, you know, a the paradise. happiest country uh, you know, in the world, it's been voted that several times. And, um, you know, all the people, all the research that we did, the little bit that we did was uh, how everybody is so nice. So I really genuinely came with the idea that everything was going to be so much um, better uh, than than Louisiana, you know, or wherever in right. the United States. And so I was not prepared to um, <clears throat> do things like you know, hide my boots 
you know, right. not leave my boots out on my back porch, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Now, Karen has a, a, a good question uh, and says, uh, Rebecca, do you carry a knife as protection or pepper spray? I carry that here in the U.S. or bear spray when I'm on hikes for protection with animals. What do you carry uh, out alone? Anything, Rebecca? I have in certain neighborhoods because I would go exercise sometimes by myself. So you'd I'm go on, running. Yeah, I'd go running. Um, and I had pepper spray and a knife uh, just in a little fanny pack thing that I had. And not that anybody ever did anything, but, you know, it just wasn't smart. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. And but most of the time we're together, but I don't do anything here. This, you know, I have I didn't. It depended on the place. Yeah. You know, you know this like, place is very, from, very safe, um, but we're very, very remote. Anybody that comes out here, dude, they're stupid. It's one way in, one way out. And, you know, I know it. You know, everybody knows it before they get close to the house. And like when we lived in Carmona, we were in a um, a family community like Gringos. Uh, were they connected? No, they were from Spain. They had uh, built a house. They bought property from a family, um, just a piece of their the family's property, and they built a home. Well, I felt totally safe because we knew all the family members. Yeah. There's no reason, you know. So it just it does depend. But just like any anything else, it doesn't hurt because around here. Um, you never know when a snake is going to be pop up, you know, yeah. being or, you know, something, something. Like and look, that. even in this community, uh, I say this is a very safe community, but look at every community, you got a snake. And guess what? There's a snake in this community and everybody knows who he is. And I didn't mean a person. I meant a real snake. Well, you meant a real snake. OK, well, this is a real person. <laughs> so even in this community, there is a, a guy that nobody likes. Uh, you know, people, you know, I, I, I'm I am integrated with the community. Uh, they all know me and they see that I'm not the typical gringo. I mean, we well, get it. We, we get give a, back to the community. Yeah, we give back to the community. There's an avalanche. Man, I'm out there and I'm digging and I'm shoveling this avalanche with the rest of them. OK, they have fundraisers for the yeah. school. And, and, and I'm pay. donating to the fundraisers and stuff. I'm giving back constantly. OK, now here's a good question. <clears throat> Muka says, serious question. Is it not a good idea to wear U.S. military shirts, hats, etc., moving to Santa Anta next month? Hey, good question, because everybody knows that Costa Rica doesn't have a military. Guess what? I have always, always, if I go places and I wear my camouflage pants, it's kind of like uniform for me, okay? And I get a lot, a lot, a lot of respect. Uh, people are like, were you in the military? I tell them, yeah, I'm six years in the Marine Corps, you know? And guess what? I think a lot of that is a huge, huge deterrent. Yes, absolutely wear your military stuff, but don't, don't, don't have this "I'm better than you" attitude, right? Uh, uh, you know, we just, do see other people wear military. Yeah, there's, you know, there's not fatigues and, and um, there's not a lot of people, but you know, there's there are in San Jose. You can go by and get some used, uh, you know, camouflage clothing and stuff like that. But yeah, look, whenever I go to um, when I go to the border in Panama, I wear my camouflage. I get huge, huge respect because almost always they'll ask me if I was in the service. When I tell them I'm U.S. Marine Corps, the last time I was there, that guy pulled out a knife, a U.S. Marine Corps emblem on it, you know, and we and we had a great conversation. So, yes, it's a very good idea. If you weren't in the military, stick and go buy you some camouflage before you come to Costa Rica and wear it. It's a good deterrent, okay? And back to Karen's question, you know, I, I was taking the question as like when I'm away from here, um, walking or whatever, uh, where we live now, I don't do that. But I, I keep a machete. Um, I actually keep a, a knife next to the bed, not for necessarily people, but because we are living out in the in the jungle, you know. I, I've had to kill a snake. I He was gone, and uh, <laughs> I had to machete chop a snake. Yeah. And you know, Alan picks at me because he said it wasn't no big snake, but to me, I mean, he was right. <laughs> that by, snake was as big as my pinky, but to her, it's a big snake. <laughs> he, and he was by my desk, and it, you know, it's like, but, 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 don't go scaring people. That's not normal. Hardly ever do we have snakes out here, okay? And because, and we're just too high up, it's cold, well, okay? And right now, I think, um, because it was dry, it probably was looking for some water or something, you know? yeah. But uh, yeah, that's not the norm. But yeah. I've seen two snakes since we've been here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been here over two years. So anyway. So anyway. OK, so let's kind of go further with this. 
Okay, so we talked about petty theft. We're talking about someone maybe breaking into your house. Okay, here's an actual, real, real scenario, okay? Now, at the time, I did not have a camera installed on my car. It would have been fun if I'd have had a camera installed on my car. You could buy those Amazon real cheap, easy to install. But uh, one day, I'm leaving out of Walmart. And where Walmart's at, it's a four-lane road, right? Two lanes going one way, two lanes going the other. And Walmart had a, uh, uh, what do you want to call that lane? You ease into? A turning, oh, a yield lane. It, I guess it's yield, whatever. So I'm easing into traffic. So really at that spot, three lanes. So, it, and, it, and it's raining. It's not pouring down rain, but it, it is raining. Well, I look out and there's two lanes behind me. I'm easing into the traffic and I can see one car way back, okay? But there's two lanes and there's not hardly any traffic. So I go ahead and I ease into the traffic. Well, he blows his horn. I mean, he just doesn't let up. And he, he easily could have gotten over in the left lane and gone around me, but he didn't. He, this guy, just serious road rage, blowing his horn beside behind me. And then he gets beside me and he's blowing his horn. And when he gets beside me, he's like, Tico, I mean, no, gringo. And he, he gets closer and closer and bam, he intentionally hits me because guess what? So we stop in the highway. He gets out of his car. He's got two women in the back, witnesses. And he says, gringo, you better have a lot of money. This was an intentional collision because he wanted to get paid. Now, got to say, the guy had a nice car. And he hit a 26-year-old vehicle. Now, I'm not recommending this. Called my buddy. I says, dude, this is what happened. What do I do? And, the, and this my, my best friend Tico said, Alan, leave. I'm like, it's hit and run. Not in Costa Rica. Leave. You will not win this battle. I got it. I got I got in my car. I backed up and took off. And that guy's like, hey, I like poor sucker. Now you got to pay for this, this, this wreck job on the side of your car. And you intentionally hit me. But guess what? It would have been my word against those three. And I left. Now, let me back up. Let's say you had actual footage, actual proof. You went to the police. OK, uh, I could go and, and they're not going to do anything. I could go to an attorney and I could present my proof to an attorney. And almost every attorney in Costa Rica, almost, I didn't say every, almost every attorney would say, I can defend you. I can help you. We'll win this. I know this because of actual proof. I can help you. And you can, oh, it's going to cost you $3,000. You can pay. Get six months down the road, we're out of money, but I got good news. We're moving along. You're going to pay some more. Oh, six months later, God's in your hand. You're going to pay and pay and pay until all of a sudden, you know, five years down the road, you decide I ain't paying no more money. You're not going to get a resolution. Nothing is going to happen. Now, maybe, maybe you're the one in a thousand where something actually happens. In most cases, I hear it all the time. Ten years down the road, they still never heard anything. OK, and uh, nothing happens. OK, so back to that original question. When bad things happen in Costa Rica, do you have any recourse? OK, uh, like Rebecca said in that video. The United States is lawsuit happy. We sue about everything. I stink and spilled hot coffee on my genitals, and now I want to sue McDonald's, okay? And I was too stupid and put it in it. Come on. So anyhow, I don't want to open up a can of worms there. In, in Costa Rica, if you're that stupid, uh, you fall off in a hole, that's your own fault, okay? Now, can you file a lawsuit? In Costa Rica, it's called a denuncia. I can't spell that, but it's called a denuncia. I've actually filed a denuncia against somebody and never heard a single thing. Never. Uh, this has probably been eight years ago. Never got a response. You can file a lawsuit. You can file a denuncia, okay? <clears throat> Ticos will, will sometimes threaten and say, I'm going to file a denuncia against you. Say, go ahead, because nothing's going to happen. Nothing, okay, most of the time. Could something happen? Sure. Well, there was this famous case. And if you guys want to look it up, do just do a little bit of uh, research, searching on, um, on the Internet. But there was this famous case where 
this guy's property got stolen, like taken from him by the lawyers, by the attorney, his, his attorneys that he had given power of attorney to handle his paperwork. And this guy must have had deep pockets because it was the principle of it. He stayed on it, stayed on it, stayed on it. It was in the news. Uh, he he pressed and talked to, uh, you know, he had to talk to political people, whatever. But finally, I think it took 10 years, if I remember right. He finally got a uh, a ruling in his in his, in his favor. favor, and uh, it made the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, that, but how many of you are going to go through that level? You know, yeah. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but with car accidents, isn't it because the it's an international insurance? Like the insurance just covers. Yeah, I, it you doesn't know, matter who was right or who right. was wrong. If I understand, and, and, and it not depends. to say that they couldn't sue. Them. <laughs> Beyond right. That if right. They wanted to, right. But. I mean, in this case, if I'm understanding right, because you buy government insurance, you know, it's your March Amo, and that covers your basic. You can buy more insurance with them. And and then, of course, that person can then go ahead and try to sue me. But, um, you know, it, it, the legal system moves so bad. So, you know, it's just not something you want to deal with. OK. Yeah, so, um, what Mook is saying about the, um, yeah, but you know, like Mooka said, yeah, it sounds like a good idea to have a dash cam. Yes, indeed, it is a good idea. Yeah, and that's something to consider if you're moving, if you're planning to move to Costa Rica. Um, that kind of technology, that kind of like, um, yeah, I guess technology, the, the cameras, <coughs> all of that, that can be brought over in, in your suitcase. And I'm sure for a lot, lot cheaper. Wow. Than buying it here. Well, because here, you have a very limited selection. Plus, it tends to be a little bit older technology, depending on where you're shopping. Yeah. If you go to San Jose, don't let everybody get crazy. In San Jose, you can find almost anything. But um, depending on where you're shopping, it's going to be a little bit older technology at what would you say at least double maybe more yeah it's going to be you so know something to consider we yeah. always say you know you know i always say if you're going to buy anything that's high tech whether it's your computers your phone your watches anything high tech buy it in the united states uh we go home i just buy a suitcase full of stuff so just just you know not, uh, not to mention if you don't speak spanish or read spanish that well all the instructions yeah. directions they all you know it's in spanish this is a spanish-speaking country you know are bad for moving to a country and not <laughs> knowing the Spanish, knowing the language. But um, you know, that's what we did. We, yeah. we went back. Yeah. We didn't bring it with us because, duh, we didn't even know yeah. that we needed that. We, yeah. we didn't think we would need that. But we did go back to the United States and bring back cameras. and Yeah, we brought uh, back everything that we needed. Now, once, my, once we get done with this house and I start setting up the inside, I mean, this is going to be one high tech house, you know, uh, it's going to be super nice. Now, you know what? Uh, hopefully we'll be in there in a few weeks. But you know what? It's going to be a while before I finish the inside because I'm enjoying life. I'm I'm not in a hurry. Uh, I've not done a lot of videos because I've been working on the outside. I want to get out of this barn. You can see how dark it is in this barn inside the house. It's just so awesome. So uh, but I will I will set it up. There's things that you can do. So here's another good question. Uh Mindful says, I'm wondering if Panama is just as bad with the legal system. And um, I would say yes. And, 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 and the reason I say yes is because I went into Panama. They uh, impounded my motorcycle and uh, just real fast, real short. Uh, it was illegal, everything they did. And I had to actually pay a Panamanian to take my ticket. They took my ticket and then I had to go to the impound fee to get it out. But then I couldn't drive the bike out. I had to put it in a, a taxi to get it. To, so, yeah, you know, Panama is just as bad. I, I couldn't really go into detail because I, I don't have a, enough experience with Panama. And remember the, um, what do you call the yard where they, the, uh, the, impound, the impound lot? The impound lot. It was full of oh. campers. I don't know who's. I don't know if these were people passing through. Passing through, through didn't but, have the right permissions, yeah. but they won't think twice about impounding your stuff. Yeah, because Alan had, I was inside the store and we didn't know one side was Costa Rica. One door, when you enter was Costa Rica, the other door was, if you went out that door, it was Panama. We, yeah. we didn't know that. It was yeah, right didn't on know, the We were brand line. new. We didn't know that. Yeah. And so he was just waiting for me to finish my shopping. He was riding around the store. With, and I got, side. I got, I was less than a hundred feet from the store. I could see the store whenever they stopped me. And I called Rebecca. She's like, Rebecca called me. Hey, I'm about to come out. Are you ready? I says, don't pay for the groceries. We got to walk home. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Anyway, uh, now Muka says, so as a recap, because I think this is important, the policia probably aren't going to help you. The transistors will make up stuff for bribes. Well, and while that's true, and lawyers can't help you, it's a wild, wild west. Yes and no. Not every single transistor was bad. I've been stopped one time where the transistor cop was a nice guy. He, uh, he did give me a hard time. I was really nice, really friendly, and he let me go. Not every transistor cop's bad. Not every Tico's going to rip you off. Not every policeman is bad. Okay, lawyers, not all lawyers are bad, but the I did have one good Tico lawyer who charged me the right fee, did a good job uh, when I bought my property for the tower. Okay, so you got to understand, I am not against Tico's. I did not come to Costa Rica to become a Tico. I didn't come to Costa Rica to live like a Tico. But you know what? I Rebecca already is kind of a Tico. She's always late. Uh, you know, uh, I've 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 learned to slow down a lot. I like to grow my own vegetables and have my own garden, do my own thing. So uh, it is the wild, wild west out here, though. So understand that, and you do have to to take care of yourself. So hey. Um, you just you just got to be careful. So uh, anyway, just it's just a thought, okay? Uh, now, hey, you know, now here's something. Doug says, hey, I feel like the products of Costa Rica ought to have an English label on them and ingredients, just like we put Spanish on everything in the U.S. Uh, hey, I kind of agree with you there. Uh, but at the same time, a, you know, a lot of the stuff that comes into Costa Rica is already English labels, and they turn around and put a Spanish sticker on top of it. <laughs> and those stickers are like man, them stickers you can't are peel super glue. You try to peel the sticker <laughs> off to see the English underneath, yeah. and it peels the whole. If you can even scrape it, get it off. It peels the uh, the English underneath. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And maybe they will do that in the future. I, I kind of doubt it, you but know, because it's not there's enough. There's not enough. Yeah, yeah, of the you know, it's like just learn Spanish. Yeah. Gringo. Now, and uh, the United States is different because there's the United States a, is trying to help a, everybody. Yeah, well, the the there's a lot a lot of Spanish speaking people um, in the United States. Yeah. So. Now, mindful grind says your video about San Beto. Uh, made me fall in love with that area. But then I started considering Boquete when you discuss the fuel prices and tech costs. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up because if if I were to consider going to another, to Panama, the only place I would live would be Boquete. I think Rebecca and I went to travel it maybe once or twice, uh, a few times. Anyway, it's a beautiful area and it's the only place in coast in Panama that I've seen that looks very, very similar to Costa Rica. That's what I was about to say. It's yeah. the same terrain. It's it, the and same... that's because it's the neighbor. You get past Boquete and then it flattens out. You know. Yeah. The beaches are just like it's a continuation, of course, of the uh on the Pacific and on the yeah. uh, Caribbean side, continuation of the same beautiful beaches that right. Costa Rica Here, has. And but it does change, like you said. Once you go past that, like mm -hmm. when you start going by David and um, yeah. for sure Panama City, all that changes. Yeah. It doesn't look like Costa now, Rica anymore. Now the, the the pro of being in Panama, because uh, look, you know, I'm not trying to convince you to come to Costa Rica. I will give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm trying to be better at teaching you the ugly, so that you're not like. I don't like Alan. I don't well, I really don't care if you like me or not, but I do want to try to be a little bit better about it. I didn't start this channel to make friends. I started this channel to get revenge on the people that took advantage of me. So anyway, uh, if you go to Panama, one of the very pros about it is that you're you can get your residency so easy, so much faster. And I'm like, Costa Rica, just follow Panama's lead. You want more people here, you make more money, you then make it easier for people. So you can get your residency in Panama so much easier. Uh, I wouldn't live in Panama because the people there are not nearly, nearly as friendly. Wow. They're just kind of hard uh, and a lot of military run around with machine guns. And, you know, oh, my gosh, it's terrible. And the fuel. Yeah, everything is cheaper in Panama. I won't say half price, but a lot, lot cheaper, close to half price. OK, so. But you, but you know what? They ride around with uh, the machine guns and stuff, but I bet they don't have a lot of crime. You know, we don't know that for sure. I don't know that for sure, but, you know, but who that's knows? That's the impression I get, you know, is chances yeah. are it seems like there's a heavy police um, presence and, and they are armed. Whereas here in Costa Rica, 
they usually ride around four police officers in a pickup truck with their lights with right. their lights on, right? And, and like, so what I'm good coming. is that? <laughs> all, all you that are doing wrong, here we come. <laughs> if you're robbing Island's house, duck, turn your flops light off. <laughs> so it is different. It is different. And uh, Mindful Grind says, hey, well, I love the way you are transparent. The way you discuss Costa Rica is not in any way negative to him. And you do a wonderful job sharing we the reality Costa of the balance. Rica. For goodness sakes, we're here. Uh, we can go home anytime we want. Well, we, we you know, yeah, you know, stop calling the U.S. home. Huh? No, U.S. is not home. Hadn't been for a long time. But that's where our yeah. roots are. That's where and and thanks is. to Uncle Chico. Uncle Chico typed in that word denuncia. So denuncia is the uh kind the lawsuit small, small claims you know would, would you say that uncle would, like it's a small claim i don't suit? think it's a small claims thing but you know in, in the united states you've got that small claims court you go over there you take care of it real fast costa rica doesn't have that but you can file a denuncia but that denuncia could, could get on a pile of paperwork or underneath a pile like you, nothing will ever well i'm not gonna say nothing will ever happen you could get lucky uh but anyway that's it is the costa rican lawsuit okay yeah. But something that you just barely touched on that I think is worth mentioning again is um, if you get a dishonest lawyer, and there are a lot of them. Wow. Um, that's, that's, that's why it's important to use the people I recommend. All right. Uh, because or, or get, um, get recommendations from other yeah. uh, people who have used the attorney and had, um, you know, had success with them or. The situations where people have just kept putting money you know it starts off like you were saying three thousand dollars okay so you give them three thousand dollars and then they just keep stringing you along when in actuality we found out later that really didn't it really wasn't going to come to anything yeah. it, it wasn't for us it was for a friend that we were helping him because he couldn't travel and so we were we were trying to help yeah. him and they just kept stringing along, stringing along because they're like, that gringo's got money, that gringo. And, you know, so, yeah, and, and so, but look, I mean, take a look at, you know, cause what Tess is saying, Tess says, you know, it's not like real bad things happen to everyone. No, they don't. You know, it usually happens to people that are a target. Okay. It's just that you want to be aware of what has happened to some people. Yeah. That's why we share what we're trying to share. And look, Hey, I'm sorry. I, I admit sometimes I have shared stuff and I've gotten so mad and so emotional. I, I didn't share it with a calm matter. You know, uh, you could feel my emotions because I got shafted. Okay. But I'm trying to get better. I mean, it's like Tess says, who in the world would expect that you would hire a lawyer, a lawyer, and he would steal your home. Exactly. Tess. And you know, that's because in the U S we're used to, you know, I can't speak for Canada or anywhere else, but in the United States, if, if a lawyer is that, um, you know, shysty or whatever, He's not going to be in business for very long because people are going to report it to the Better Business Bureau, to the um, the Lawyers Association or whatever it is that regulates them and they could lose their license. So, yeah. you know, it's just like a building contractor, a general contractor. They might get away with, you know, ripping off a few people, but eventually they eventually they out of business. A, yeah. And so most people get ripped off because they don't ask for a contractor's license. They don't ask for proof of insurance. Maybe a hurricane just hit. They desperate to get their roof fixed and all the, the carpenters and contractors are tied up. So they just settle with somebody without doing their due diligence. Yeah. And so, you know, don't do, don't do that here because you can get ripped off even little tiny things that people you probably won't ever hear about. But I think we've told this story before about people taking the bus and a uh, taxi cab driver pulling up and saying, pulls oh, up to the bus stop. Did you hear the bus is not going to be coming because <laughs> there's a tree block in the road. Yeah, so, you know, but if you want, I'll take you. And so they pay a taxi cab a lot, lot more to take them because they think, you know, and it's a common, um, it's a, it's a common scam. You, yeah. Scam. And uh, I mean, I'm smiling. It's not funny, but it's, <laughs> It's like, no, it's just you You have to laugh about it, Randy. Stuff happens. You yeah, got to get over because it. Because if you're going to be, you know, you feel stupid afterwards, you know, but 
um, how are you supposed to know? Yeah, you, know, you, don't, you don't know think that somebody's going to have a running scam like that. And so come to find out you could have ridden the bus for six bucks, but you ended up paying one hundred and sixty dollars for the cab. Ride. Right. You know, you know, and no harm done other than your pocketbook. Yeah. You know? Now, take and a look. With, yeah. Muka but, says, hey, I'll be there a week from tomorrow. Manuel Antonio driving down from Liberia. The last trip he's been there. I got Jack twice by uh, twice uh, for a contribution from the transisto and they wanted everything in my wallet. I'm hoping it's going to be better. But see, he has learned and maybe he heard it from our channel. He's got a fake wallet this time. And that's what we try to tell people. Look, you got to have that fake wallet yeah. and you got to pull it out. And that fake wallet's got 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And look, this is all I got in my wallet. Uh, hey, I I'll give you this and they'll take it and let you go. And remember, ladies, throw your purse away from you so that they if they go after it, give you a chance. I don't know. Those are hard situations. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it it's different for everybody. I mean, take a look at what Seafoam says. Hey, it's not worth buying property in Central America. Just rent and live low key. And you know what? I would say absolutely. You know, it depends on you, your age, how much money you got. Rent and live low key. However, when you rent, it's really hard to control your environment. I mean, look around. You can find some, right? Yeah, you can find some. You can find some. Um, big, right. Big but, you know. Uh, if, you know, depending on your age, how much money you got, sometimes it's, it's just better to rent, you know, and then if your neighbor robs you, move, okay? But, uh, hey, if you have the money and you can buy a piece of property with an existing house and remodel it or you build a place, well, then it's it's worth it because you can really control your environment and enjoy the life you want to enjoy. So, uh, hey, uh, here we are at the top of the hour. I got to let you guys go. Uh, but, hey, hey, do me a favor. like comment, subscribe, even after we get off of this. And that way it'll push stuff out there. And uh, hey, Rebecca and I, we're going forward. We're not looking at all of the drama. We're going forward. We're going forward. We're going forward. You know, uh, and my whole goal on YouTube is to, you know, I, I swore to serve and protect. Okay. And so if somebody does something wrong, if I got to go deep cover to get the evidence, I'm going to go deep cover and get the evidence. But you know what? Uh, I, I need to, to protect. I need to let you know so that you don't make the same mistakes I make. Okay. So, Hey, uh, we, we going forward. We're enjoying life. This, this is a drama free channel and we just want to enjoy life, help you to the best of our ability. If you enjoyed this channel, Hey, we greatly, greatly appreciate your support. If you join the members area, if you just support us by simply hitting that like, that thumbs up, you know, that subscribing by sharing our content with other people. Hey, we greatly appreciate you. Uh, and look, I'm not saying don't go watch other channels. Go watch other channels, learn stuff. I'm not saying oh, yeah. pick there's my so side. Many, there's so many different perspectives. And Costa Rica has so much to offer as far as uh, variation. You got the mountains, you got the beaches, you have gated communities, yeah. you have big sprawls of a farmland that you could put a nice little house and grow your own food. It's, it's just got everything. Yeah. You know, so, Hey, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you, uh, F you unsubscribe you if you don't believe me. Hey, look, I, I, I give you the truth. You do with it what you please. Uh, I honor and respect you for whatever you want to do. It's your life. I hope that I can help you. And if I can help you, then I feel like I've done my job. So folks, I don't like the job. I don't like I the like drama to get either. Along with I, everybody you know, if I can, if so, at all possible. Hey, once again, we'll see you next Sunday. And I don't know what we're talking about next Sunday, but we're going to have a good time regardless of what it is. Make sure you get your popcorn and your Allen's apple juice, and we'll have a good time. Hey, y'all have a great one. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye, y'all.